previously on Hard Knocks. Hey, numb nuts, let's go. Every year, NFL fans are treated to an intimate, behind-the-scenes look at an NFL team through the lenses and mics of HBO's Hard Knocks. And every year, they struggle to find a willing participant for the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Shut Up Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus. That's Kevin. Today, we're talking Hard Knocks, and we're trying to answer just one simple question. Why do teams hate Hard Knocks? Nobody wants to be on HBO's Hard Knocks. At least, that's what we're led to believe. Because even though only four teams were eligible this year to be chosen, any of the 32 teams could volunteer. But that never happens. Except in 2020, when both the Rams and the Chargers did. And it was the worst season I've ever seen. Watching Jared Goff, Goff, and Sean McVay talking about porta potties? Take a don't take a in the porta potties. Players don't want to be on hard knocks. They force it down our throats and we gotta deal with it. Coaches don't want to be on hard knocks. I know there's several teams that would uh, love for hard, knock, hard knocks to be in their building, but we're just not one of them. Why? Why do they hate it so much? Freaking hard knocks on these damn cameras. As much as you want to say that it's not going to be a distraction, it is going to be a distraction. Is it? The show's been on for two decades. Surely there's some evidence of that. First of all, the crew down at NFL Films, they do a great job of kind of blending in behind the scene. You know, they just do a great job of that. But other than that, man, we had fun with it. It hasn't really stuck out like, oh my gosh, they're here all the time. Like, get out of my face. It hasn't been like that at all. Detroit Lions cornerback Chase Lucas called the experience dope and said his family loved watching him on it. I couldn't find any examples of players citing specific examples of how it distracted them. You want to see a flying asshole, you're going to see one. Not that there aren't players who didn't hate being on the show. Some didn't like the way they were portrayed. Others, most notably James Harrison, went out of their way to be antagonistic because he felt the crew didn't deserve to be there. Cameraman, I'm coming for you, you prick. Looking at the team records as of 2020, just five of the previous 14 participants reached the playoffs, about 35% per NFL research. That doesn't sound very good until you realize that eight of the last 10 teams to that mark either equaled or passed their previous season wins, meaning the majority of them took a step forward, not back. I can't help but notice that the majority of voices saying it's a distraction come from those who've never experienced it, which says to me it's a matter of perception, fear, not fact. So let's take a second to explore who they're so fearful of. Just who is doing all that supposed distracting? It might be called HBO's Hard Knocks, but that's because HBO is the show's distribution channel. The show is actually a co-production between HBO and NFL Films, as in the NFL itself. That's how teams are forced to go on the show. NFL Films was formed in the 1960s, and they've been roaming sidelines and creating content for the league ever since. That's how you get a football life. Peyton's Places, NFL Matchup, Game Day Access, 30 for 30, Road to the Super Bowl. It shoots shitloads of footage of every single team, and it's been doing it for over 60 years. Most of the shows you watch about the NFL, whether it be on Prime, HBO, or ESPN, are all possible through a partnership with NFL Films. There seems to be this misconception that HBO crew members swarm team facilities like stormtroopers and shove cameras up everyone's butts. The truth is, NFL Films was likely to be there already. They're always shooting. The Hard Knocks crew, in specific, is about 35 people, which is small by production standards. Typically, the people you notice are the handheld camera ops, an audio tech, and maybe one or two others like a utility, a producer, or a production assistant. Because goddammit, people need their copy. We're talking about small groups trying to stay out of the way. That's what they do. That's what they're paid to do. They're fucking professionals. The rest is long lens cameras shooting from a distance and remote robotics cameras in the meeting rooms controlled by somebody in a production trailer. They're not even in the room. You know, what a distraction. I said, no, no, it's not. No. You, I never knew one time when they were filming me. Why is the Hard Knocks crew considered a distraction, but Aaron Rodgers going on Pat McAfee's show every week isn't? 
or hosting your own podcast. I'll never be on Hard Knocks. I don't want to have to have a Dear Diary every single day, which this is my show. So this say, is my you, Dear Diary. Yeah, you're kind of oh. contradicting yourself. But it's yeah. Okay. I think the best example of non-football distractions is the Kansas City Chiefs in 2022. Travis Kelsey hosted a podcast during the season. Juju Smith-Schuster was embarrassing himself on TikTok. Patrick Mahomes colon housed an entire film crew for Netflix's quarterback series. Meanwhile, social media blasted his wife and his brother was busy dancing on dead players' tributes and embarrassing himself on TikTok which was better than the shit he ended up doing later that year. In between all of that, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs won the fucking Super Bowl. I can't say for sure that Hard Knocks is not a distraction, but you don't need to be distraction free to succeed. Whether it's Hard Knocks, NFL Films, ESPN, NFL Network or FS1, local media or social media, cameras are everywhere and they're not going away. This is the reality for NFL players. I find the distraction excuse to be pretty thin. You live at the circus. I don't think one more clown makes a difference. All the fun of camp eventually gives way to the pain of cutdowns, when teams are forced to make tough choices to meet the 53-man roster limit. A lot of players and coaches despise this part of the show, and I get it. It's sad to watch a person's dreams get shattered. Honestly, it's my least favorite part of the show, because it's heartbreaking and also kind of boring. What? It is. Cuts are a part of the preseason, and so it's a part of Hard Knocks. But do we actually need to see it? I'm not sure that we do. Like I said, from a TV standpoint, it's kind of boring. No one's flipping chairs or punching coaches, and not once has a single player uttered the phrase, you'll rule the day while shaking his fist. It's never a villain's origin story. We're gonna know what happens whether they film it or not. When a player gets called to the office and told, bring your playbook or iPad, you know what's happening. The player knows what's happening. I think we could bypass being in the room on that one. When he emerges from the office, he's gonna tell somebody. He's gonna call his girlfriend or his wife or his mama. Someone's gonna get notified. And even if they don't, you can have Ray Donovan narrate something over it like, old Poochie loves kicking ass, but now, it was the door that was kicking him in the ass. Or whatever. The Jets are refusing to let this be part of their hard knocks. Which, apparently you can do, and just nobody ever asked. I still don't think showing the cutdown process is a reason not to do this show. Unless you think they're glorifying it. But I don't think that they are. It seems like a reality show staple because other shows vote people off islands, and ladies are given roses, but that's not what's happening here. It's not like HBO promos are like, prepare to ugly cry. You won't believe who's getting cut on this week's hard knocks. Every year the scene is just a coach sitting in his office. You're a great player. Please don't come back. You feel bad for the player, unless you're a sociopath, because hard knocks took the time to humanize him. You learned all about how they overcame their speech impediment at an inner city school for disabled Pokemon victims, and how they took on 17 jobs at the age of three just to help grandma make rent so she could stop selling her body on geriatric only fans. We rarely get to see the players without their helmets, let alone get to know their stories. Hard Knocks gives us a window into the players' lives and what it takes to make it in the NFL. And that's what this show is about, like how hard it is to make an NFL team. I just hope that they get to fall in love with this team. I mean, that's our goal every year is to like at least make them your second favorite team. The teams up for this year's Hard Knocks were the Jets, Bears, Commanders, and Saints. I don't think you have to look very far to understand why the coaches wouldn't want an in-depth look into their work. I'm talking about Robert Sala, Matt Eberflus, Ron Rivera, and Dennis Allen. Every one of them is on the hot seat. The last thing they need is to be under the microscope when it comes to their process. But what about the rest of the league? Why aren't Andy Reid, Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll, and the rest volunteering? Because there's no incentive to do so. I think from a team standpoint, this is the biggest reason no one wants to be on Hard Knocks. Currently, the NFL is using the stick approach instead of the stick with a carrot on it. Never mind distractions, intrusions, or whatever excuse you want to use, the players, the coaches, and everything in between are a commodity, and you don't give something of value away for free. Teams only say no, but what they should be saying is, what's in it for me? And I'm not talking about money. I'm sure teams would be interested in other things like 
choosing their bye week, or no international game, home field advantage if they make the playoffs, a compensatory draft pick, maybe drop watermelons on Roger Goodell's head from a great height. I don't know what teams would find the most appealing. All I'm saying is, there's gotta be incentives to entice teams or it's just gonna remain a struggle. And by the way, we've all heard about the NFL makes them go on hard knocks, but I've never once heard anyone say about how they do that. Like, how do they do that? Like, what's the punishment if they don't let them in the building? I cannot find that information anywhere, and I desperately want to know. My mind is racing. Thanks for watching Shut Up Football. I hope you liked this one. If you want to subscribe, that would be cool. Leave your comments below, like the video, click the bell, say hi to your mom for me, and we'll catch you next time. Peace! Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. sound right boy and you're still not scrolling but what if you were what would that look like mm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to give me five stars you want to give me want to give me five stars